All right, all right, all right. What the hell is going on, everybody? And welcome back. We've got a big best of three between Australia in the bottom right, playing for Matcharino Esports, and Dark in the top left. And what's really cool about this match is Dark is basically a drunken boxer in StarCraft, and Australia has actually proclaimed himself as the president of Clown College. People said to him in an interview many years ago, I believe it was in Nation Wars, they said, so you're playing for Team America. Obviously, big country, lots of fans, very passionate, not very good at games. Known for being kind of cheesy and playing like idiots. And Australia, he just got a wry smile and he said, we may be clowns, but we're powerful clowns. He said, he, he owned it. He didn't try and pretend. He said, I know we play a bit different. Europeans just defend all game and scout really well. Koreans are masters of timing attacks. And North American players basically put do an interpretive dance version of StarCraft that's a little bit weird. And, and, and some would argue suboptimal. But man, Estrella finds a way to win and he always does in the most interesting way possible. He's one of the most creative StarCraft players and I love watching him play. And by the way, just a heads up, if you guys are watching this over on my, my, my main pig YouTube channel, turns out the series has been as bananas as I hope. Because I'm casting this with no idea what channel this is going on, what the title and thumbnail will be. But... I see these two playing. I think also a few people said, oh, check out this series. It was fun. So I, I think I think, I think I, I might have a, a bit of a, a tip off. It's been sitting in my replay folder to cast for, for over a week now. And I'm finally getting to it. I've just been itching at it. I'm like, how did I leave this this long? Because I see these two. And obviously Australia is so creative and weird. Dark is just drunk half the time. In at least he looks it in that he's like always supply blocked. Very creative in how he hides what he's doing though and impossible to pin down because he has so much variety. So I was talking to this about right, with Skillis the other day after we did a show match and how when you're playing against Dark as a Protoss player, everything he does is suboptimal, but it's so impossible to read that you always end up getting caught off guard. And suboptimal beats is not as important against Protoss as surprise. Surprise is the most important thing in PvZ. Ooh, blocking the third. Now guys, on this base, you need to build four Zerglings because this third base sucks. However, maybe it's a little faster to queen walk from that third base, so maybe it's okay. Shield regen will save this probe now. It can absorb a few more hits. Nicely done. Adepts clean up the Zergling. Pylon block stopped him from getting in. So two Adept pressure goes across the map behind it. A Stalker and a Sentry coming in. He's actually not going across the map. He wants to deny the scouting. Ah, good move. Good move from Australia. So he's going to hunt that down while poking with this Adept to confirm the third base. Behind it, there's no tech. <clears throat> no tech at all. Estrella is going to go for a third base, and then he's going to defend with four gate. Watch for him to send a probe out in the next few seconds, guys. Okay, so Estrella sees... The oh, he didn't see the third. Oh, Estrella. No, he didn't see the third. Estrella, wake up. You didn't check it. He thinks he checked it, but he didn't. Oh, no. Oh, no. There you go. You Americans don't shut up about how I say no. So I'm gonna I'm gonna over accentuate it. I'm gonna make it worse. Now on, you see, uh, every time I do it, it's gonna be no. <laughs> it's it's gonna sound like a demented dog barking or something. I don't even know. Third base goes down into twilight. He does this in the face of what he thinks is a two base build. May at least he's got a hallucination going across to give him some scouting. Two adepts on the outside. Stalker sentry on the inside. Two adepts down there as well. Twilight council is coming in. Third gas coming up as well. Raw material is going to be very high for Australia, but Dark's just going to go for a Ravager Ling all in, and that's very hard to stop with this. So he sees no third, no lair, Roach Warren almost finished. Unfortunately, he still doesn't know about the third base, but honestly, that should be enough info. Build two gateways right now, please, Australia. Batteries. Oh my goodness. Oh, he's going to go Dark Shrine. And batteries on the high ground. Guys, guys, what did we just see? He's literally like, you know what happens is you build a battery here, it gets biled instantly, does nothing. But what if we build the pylon on the high ground in preparation? The bio, he's not going to be able to bile them. He won't have high ground vision. So you can pull back here and here and actually get healed from the, the shield battery overcharge. Oh my god, this is such a genius setup. And the dark shrine because there's no lair. And Australia confirmed. He, he scouted the natural as well. He knows there's no lair. So the DTs will put a hard timer on this. As long as he keeps his third base alive, he is good. So many Adepts. Remember, the Adepts don't have Glaives. These are not upgraded Gateway units, so they're way lower value than, than normal Protoss units, but he's up 10 workers, and he's got lots of Shield Batteries. He's still only on two Gateways right now. 
If he warps in two more units, that... Yeah, his next warp in will be ready for the DTs. Oh, the Adept Shade is actually a really good idea. But he cancels it. Nice spread on the Adepts. Adepts are doing pretty well. He's getting a bit surrounded. Still no battery overcharge. Oh my god, did he not have energy? Did he not have energy? Oh, there we go. Battery overcharge finally comes in. He should have activated that much earlier. But you know what? He hangs on nonetheless. And he's got Dark Templar out. So I think he's okay. DT's come out. They're going to put an end to it. He should go for the Ravages. And indeed he will, man. Look at that. Does dodge with the gateway units. And he's going to hunt down a few of these roaches. Lair starts up. But he's up 20 probes. Australia's miles ahead in the economy. He did lose a pretty high amount of, of gateway units, which are expensive. But I think that's okay. He cleans up most of these units. And he's going to go straight for a fourth base. Knowing he doesn't have the best counterattack timing. Problem. Dark's already counterattacking with Zerglings. He's going to deny that fourth. Great move for Dark. Estrella doesn't see it. He's coming back now. And... Okay, good pull on the probes. And I like that. The DTs were going to cause a problem there. So he figured if he surrounds, he's going to lose so many Zerglings to the Dark Templar, it's not worth it. Now we're going into Mass Gateway. So using this start, fourth base is on the way. There's Adepts on the right side. Those are going to get thrown away. He should probably just hide those up in between the minerals. And indeed, he does cancel it. Those could get taken out very easily. Forge is finished. Robo's finished as well. Creative build order from Estrella. Estrella's been using Nexus first variations way better than pretty much any Protoss in this matchup for a long time. And I love that one of the counters to it, the big Ravager Ling timing, just got shut down. Spire's on the way for Dark. Problem is Dark's behind on economy for so long. By the time that Spire finishes, Estrella should have a massive Blink Stalker army in his face attacking and trying to kill his third base. The Depths get surrounded by the Zerglings. Nice catch. No Evo Chamber, remember, for Dark. He's just trying to take the gases, and that is it. Now, Estrella hasn't made charge yet, which I find a little surprising. He's building cannons and batteries across his bases as well. So he's really investing in the insurance right now. Uh, only one cannon and one battery. I think that's fine. Not, not playing too overly safe. So many Stalkers. He's got a Warp Prism as well. Yeah, I thought he'd be going straight into charge mine. He's on 75 probe. I mean, he could just go for a Blink Stalker all in, I guess. But he's still probing the fourth, taking gases. No tech transition for Estrella just yet. Oh, don't tell me Dark gets back in this game with the Muta Swap. I'm, I'm, a, I'm an unashamed Estrella fanboy. I'm a Dark fanboy as well. But in a game like this where his all in gets held, I'm always like, okay, you, you kind of deserve to die now, right? 11 Mutalisks being built. This, this is a great timing for Estrella. The Observer is going to help out. Clearing that creep is big. But 11 Mutalisks are on the way. Doesn't want to get surrounded by the Ravagerling. Ravagerling does very well versus Stalkers. He's warping in a few Zealots to help deal with the Zerglings. Plus one attack almost finished. It's not there just yet, but it will be in a moment. And those 11 Mutalisks are about to hop. Let's go to Estrella's vision. He doesn't know. He doesn't know. Whereas Dark, look at this. His Mutas are going out that left side of the map. Estrella does not have a lot of vision right now. He's sending a Prism around the right for a Zealot drop. He's got plenty of Stalkers, so he should be able to defend just fine. But if he gets caught out of position, he might start making mistakes. These Mutalisks might surprise him. Squeezing Mutas out from the position Dark has been in was so like, oh my god, are you serious? Dark's going all in though. He's not droning his fourth. And as I say that, he starts taking gases. He's not droning his fourth because he's supply blocked. Mutas going to come in. Stalkers are there. They're nearby. But if they all blink down here, it means he can't defend his other bases. This is where Australia needs to... Yeah, blinking there is actually a mistake. It's, it's an easy mistake to make, but it is a mistake. And those Mutalisks finding pretty big damage as we speak of that. No recall available in the main. Only one Stalker there as well. Stalker's going to blink into the main and get after these Mutas. So they don't have a crazy amount of time to work. Cannons trying to go down in every single base. Blink's ready. He can blink on these Mutas. The Mutas stop. They get one more probe. And not a single Mutalisk goes down. 14 probe losses. DT and Zealots get inside the main though. It's a cute warp in. Dark 73 workers. He does actually start droning up, so he's not actually going all in on this. We definitely want to recall that prism. We haven't seen Mutalisk for a while. If you want to save that prism, it's too late now. It's going to go down. Ah, oh, he left it too late. Ah, oh, Stray should have done that a little bit earlier. Loses a few Zealots and the warp prism. Colossus is on the way as well as number two. Colossus to help deal with the Zerglings, because Zerglings are very good versus Stalkers. He's still got a Stalker in his wall. He's got cannons in all of his bases, so he does not need Stalkers in his wall right now. And let's check Estrella. Yeah, okay, he's got an, an army on the left, an army on the right. He's got a good spread of cannons everywhere. He's got a, Oh, he's even got some Stalkers there. Colossus moves right. 
And plenty of stalkers down here to fight these mutalisks. Mutas are trying to fight. He's going to go mass mutalisk. Wow. If Dark wants to do that, he needs 10 gas. He needs these two gases. Because if you want to keep trading mutalisks for stalkers, it works. But you need to absolutely get up to an insane economy. And he's not there yet. He's only at 75 workers. You can see his gas count's very low. Does have a good muta count. But especially as armor and shield upgrades come in, the mutalisk bounce damage falls off drastically. Uh, he's got plus one flyer attack. We've got plus three attack, plus one armor on the way for Astraea. Plus three attack is very unimportant for stalkers because they massively overkill versus mutas, zerglings, and roaches all the time anyway. It's actually way more important to get armor upgrades against this sort of mutaling focused composition. So instead of plus three, plasma shields is a higher value upgrade. Clip it, send it to Astraea. I'll have a chat to him about it next time he's on the stream. Um, but I'd love to debate that with him. I think that's... I mean, as he gets the Archon Colossus up, you could argue the attack upgrades are a bit more valuable. But once you see over 20 Mutalisks, I think you should always go Shields first. Mutalisks going over there. There's still four bases up. Australia's got a very solid setup. Like, Dark's on a timer, guys. He needs to make something happen very soon. Cannon does go down. Number one. Oh, that pylon does fall. But the, ca the second cannon's still there. How many Mutas has he lost? Only five. These Stalkers pull a little far away, but they blink on it. It's happy to just focus down a few of these Mutalisks. When you get to this many stalkers, it kind of becomes painful to focus fire. Because even though you are, you kind of have to to kill the mutalisks so they don't just survive. But the problem is you are overkilling those mutas a lot, which is why he's not always target firing here. Oh, this fight's pretty close. He's warping in more stalkers. 2-1 against just plus one on the mutalisks. Mutas taking decent trades, man. Especially with all the probe losses. We've seen 18 mutas for 22 stalkers in this game. Not bad at all. But he's only on 76 workers. He's on 10 gas now. He's about to go to 12 gas. He's on 11 mining, soon to be 12. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. You have to go Phoenix against this. The Mutas will, over time, they're going to catch you out of position enough to take good trades. But he's building Phoenix range, plus one air weapons, and Phoenix two at a time. So I think Dark believes he's going full ground to respond to it. And he thinks at some point the Mutalisks are just going to catch the Stalkers on the edge, only fight a few Stalkers at a time. They're going to find a fight where the Archons can't be in the battle at the same time. In this scenario, I'd probably kill one of my gateways if I was Australia, just so I could move around a little bit quicker. I know that sounds weird, but I think you've got so much cannon battery and mobility. I don't think you're too worried about the ground army coming in. It's the air army that you're more worried about. Oh, the mutas actually go deep. Wow, they're going to go real deep. It's time to show his trap card. Activated. Phoenix coming in. Oh, Phoenix range isn't quite done yet, though. Oh my gosh, it's, it's, it's not ready. Until he has Phoenix range, he can't risk losing those Phoenix. Stalkers come down. The Phoenix going after it. Phoenix range just finished. He goes for the Fleet Beacon. He's going to take it out, but it's a bit too little too late, I think. The Mutalists are getting taken down. He doesn't even get the Fleet Beacon. The Mutalists are trying to run away. On the left side, Roach Ravagerling ran in and got cleansed on that side. The Mutalists running away to the north. He's remaxing on Mutaling Bane right now. Units Lost Tab has reversed. It is now behind for Dark, whereas he was ahead in the units lost tab before this, 23 more mutalisks building. It's going to be 37 mutalisks and 50 zerglings, but the counterattack is coming. Phoenix are building two at a time. There's already six out. They hard counter mutalisks. Even though they're massively outnumbered by the mutalisks, their firepower supporting the stalker archon is going to be huge. Plus three attack, plus one armor. One archon, two colossus to deal with the zerglings. Zerglings pretty much worthless against the colossus and the archons. Stalkers here. Phoenix are at home. They're not here in the fight. Muta's going to try and fight before the phoenix arrive. The phoenix join though, and the mutalisks have to go after those phoenix. He does not have the numbers, and Dark has to tap out. Australia with a very clever Nexus first build gets a nice third base, beautiful defense. I just cannot get over that positioning with the preparation, with the pylon there, the twilight there, the two batteries, and then the extra batteries on the low ground and the DTs. Very good planning by Australia. Red dark like a book. All right, well, that was a pretty sick game one from Australia. He's going for an early probe, so he's blocked dark space. Dark is purposefully going 18 hatchery. His drone... Oh my god, he's doing this opening where he really wants to get his natural up. <laughs> this opening is so garbage, guys. So basically, his hatchery is 20 seconds late, 22 seconds late. But he's like, well, it doesn't matter because I'm going to hatchery block anyway. So I won't be able to build queens for ages because I'm building this morning ball. If he doesn't go for the hatchery block, it's terrible. And oh my god, he doesn't get the hatchery block! He didn't get there in time because he forgot to send the drone! Oh no, that's the whole point of the build! 
Oh, Dark! The drone just sitting at his third for way too long just ruined his opening. He's now going to have to take the Sympathy Prize, which is stealing a gas, which does nothing to the Protoss. It does technically change their build slightly, but the Protoss can just take a second gas down here and be, like, slightly behind on their gas. It changes very little. Um, this is a very bad opening for Dark, and he could have just taken his third on 17 supply. Now he's going to go home and take a third hatchery at this point. He lets the Extractor finish, which is fair enough. Doesn't want to keep cancelling that. Oh, man. Um... Double Chronoing Adept is always a good idea against this, because Ling Speed and Queens are, are so very late. Um, good setup. Australia should be rallying to his natural and taking that gas, though. Unless he wants to play Nina style and play single gas charge. Oh, Australia's not taking the gas, guys. He... he, he, he oh, oh he's, he's all inning! He's all inning in response! Oh, he's all inning! Okay, so the Stalker's gonna get rid of the Overlord. He's gonna proxy a gate. He's gonna build five gates. He's just going for like a six or seven gate. Estrella says, dude, you've done a donkey opening. I'm gonna take advantage. I'm gonna punish you. And it could work very well. We'll see how this goes, man. Dark's opening is, is a bit of a mess here because he didn't get the hatchery blocked down. Drone goes down already. That's a big snipe in this early game. Stalker's gonna hit the Overlord. Probes. He chronos his main. He's not actually building probes, so he's trying to fake that he's building probes in case Dark looks at it with the extractor. He does build a few more probes, and now he takes a second gas. Oh, no, no, no. He just messed up his macro. Australia's not going all in. If Australia went seven gate, I think this is a free win, guys. I think if he goes seven gate, it's a free win. As long as the stalker denies that overlord. Maybe not a free win. I think it works, though. But he's just going to transition into third gateway and robo. So he's going to do... Unupgraded Glaive Adept swarping in here and going across the map. Eh, fair enough. It's a decent pressure opening, but I do want to see him more consistent on his probes. He has not been consistent on his probe production so far. Missing a few little bits in the main and the natural. So he's a few probes from where he, he could have been if he was just a little bit tighter on it. Ooh, Zerglings. Coming in for a bit of a counterattack right as he's moving out with his Adepts. Oh, man. And that means there's only a Stalker to defend. That's a lot of Zerglings. Eight Zerglings does a crazy amount of damage. This is the sort of thing... Oh my god, especially with speed! Oh my gosh! Okay, probes are trying to fight. He's got to defend the Stalker! Stalker does get... Okay, Stalker doesn't get surrounded. Good job. Good job defending so far. But he's pulling so many probes to help defend this. That makes this awkward. Already two probes going down. Decent micro by Astraea, but he's got to keep the Stalker alive. Oh no! He's too busy microing his Adepts. Five Adepts on the other side of the map. Stalker will go down, and that means those Lings can keep being D-bags. Adepts are in the main base, though. He's already up seven workers in this game. Dark's doing a Roach Ling all-in again. Dark's going for a one-gas Roach Ling all-in by the looks of it. The Adepts are going to focus down a few more of these drones. Oh, he's going to get taken out. Those Adepts do get shaded. Meanwhile, it looks like a total of seven drones went down. How many Adepts saved? He recalled none of them. They all died. He's got two Adepts there. Guarding here. I love that because in this little choke point, they can guard the pylon as well. So he controls the middle of the map. Look, Dark's looking everywhere for the gateway, wondering where this came from. Meanwhile, Astraea is up 15, 16 workers. Dark has 42 Zerglings and nothing. Nothing. No economy. Dark's build is in the dumpster. He's got nine drones in his main base. Oh, man. That being said, Astraea doesn't have a third. And Protoss that doesn't have a third always struggles to transition. Things are going to fight into the choke point, which... I mean, Australia's Adepts are going to kill quite a few Zerglings. I wouldn't have minded him warping in a few more there as well. Now, Australia's going to go for a Prism Adept Harass, but behind this, he just needs more units up. So notice, because he's losing a gateway, he's only got two gateways right now. So he's going to have to warp in quite a few units to secure a third, and this gives Dark a big window to drone back up. So even though Dark's economy sucked, supply-wise, he's fine. And as long as he keeps Australia off a of third base for a little while longer, he'll be good. Australia goes double Stargate! Oh my god, this is so much fun! Guys, I told you this series would be fun. Oh man. Australia is just doing such cute creative plays, and Dark is doing all special tactics himself as well. Um, oh, look at that, that's a safety shade. So he's going to use that to get out of there. So the idea is you run in, pick off a drone or two, and then you shade back to safety. But he just says, screw it, let's go for it. Go for broke. Try and get out to that prism. Queen's going to intercept, though. Oh, get out, get out. Oh, my God. He's going he's gonna to lose it. He's going to lose the prism. No, he, ha he has to give it up. Give it up. Give it up. Give it up. No, Australia. <gasps> oh, my Lord. Barely survives on one hit point. 
Getting a bit too fancy. He did get four drones, to be fair, which is not bad. He's sitting here, trying to move out to a third base. He's got two Immortals right now. This actually looks like a really scary all-in, even though it's a Phoenix build. But he, he... Okay, Zealot's in the wall. You can't get surrounded. Get in the mineral line! No! Astraer, he's, he's kind of split up. Oh, I guess he has just enough units, actually. That's not that many Zerglings anymore. Only 30 Zerglings. Oh, the Queen! The 300 IQ off Creep Queen there. Shuts down the prism. Nice play. Dark is up in economy now, guys. He's been in a terrible spot for a long time. But he's basically had the freedom with those Zerglings to keep Astraea from building his third. Astraea's been stuck on two base workers. And he's used that explosive Zerg economy now to completely recover. Spire's on the way. Evo Chamber. Problem. He's only got four Queens. And there will be a lot of Phoenix hitting him soon. You know what's going to be really fun? Because he has the Spire, he has to play Corruptors. Which means we're going to see Corruptors versus Phoenix. And I wonder, does Astraea swap back into ground at that point? Try and get like Archons and Stalkers. Or does he double down and we see Phoenix, Void Ray against Musa Corruptor? I think that's one of the hardest things to actually win against a top tier Zerg player because they micro very well. So the, the Mutas will fight the Void Rays, the Corruptors will fight the Phoenix. It's really hard to target things correctly. Oh, good snipe. Great snipe on the Overseer. Now, he Dark's like, okay, I'm playing a weirdo. I don't know what he's doing. Astraea, man, dude, if he actually hides the Phoenix for another minute or two and Dark commits to Mutalisks, it's like, it's game over almost in Astraea's favor. But I think the problem is Astraea's got to move out and he's going to do it with these two popping. And he's going to try and kill all the Queens and kill a billion drones. But I think that'll give, I think Dark Spire timing might be perfect so he can see it and then build the defense needed. Army pushing through the middle. Lings are going to see it. This is a fake push, by the way, guys. He's making roaches and ravages, which is kind of what Astraea wants here. And Astraea is still hiding the Phoenix. Oh my God. I, Dark wants to build muters. The problem is he just scared him away from building muters by po poking with an immortal army. Twilight and Forge is on the way. Watching from Dark's camera, he has no idea what's happening. He has no idea what's happening. And he's like, what are you doing? So the thing is, because he's so confused, he's kind of afraid. So he's just massing Roach Ling. He sees some more Immortals. He sees a Probe trying to take a fourth, which he blocks with a Zergling. He's going to run forward to deny that. He still doesn't know about the Mutalisks, man. Let's go back to everyone's camera. The Mutas are still hiding. He's still waiting. He's going to 14. 14 Phoenix. If he goes out now and picks off all the Ravages, it's great. But he needs to do it now. Because this army's so big, Australia's ground army can't compete. Astraea's ground army can't compete. Astraea, you're in trouble, mate. Get out of here. The Phoenix need to show themselves, and he needs to do it now. Dark setting up the surround. He's going for it. Dark going for a giant surround. Oh, my God. It's rain and fire right now as those Biles land on top of that Protoss army. Ravages getting picked up very quickly. The Ravages will go down. If those Ravages died before the fight started, it's a completely different game. But they did not, and Estrella is in trouble. Phoenix picking off the Ravages. Third base in trouble. Probes will get out of there. Every single Ravager is gone. The Phoenix surprise is working. Some magic right now. But is it going to be enough? He's trying to build Void Rays, trying to warp in Zealots. Oh no, he's getting overrun. The Phoenix can pick off the Roaches, but there's too many Zerglings. They won't be able to pick up all of the Lings on the ground. And with just three gates and a robo of ground production, Astraea gets jumped on. Unfortunate here for the American player. If he had an Observer seeing this army coming, maybe he could have responded. And he did have an Observer in the middle of the map, but he didn't seem to track where that army was. The probes are going down in the main base as well. And Estrella's 300 IQ secret Phoenix play unfortunately ticks over. And much like when you go off the edge of the world and peek over to see the giant tortoises that are flying through space underneath, carrying it on the back of their disc, Estrella ticked over from 300 to zero IQ. And that's how it goes sometimes. Genius builds sometimes fall apart under pressure. That was really fun, though. I love that Dark got back in that game from being so far behind on economy. If you just look at the vision... This Observer only set up in the middle now after the army moved past. Ah, oh, that's unfortunate. That's why he didn't see it, yeah. And, and this is a big map, so he missed the army moving to his side of the map. He just didn't realize there was so much Zerg over here. He figured he'd probably see it with this Observer. Really nice play by Dark, GG. All right, guys, 300 IQ build from Australia Gets countered by himself. Macharino's Australia baits a Mass Roach Ravager response with Mass Zergling because he poked with his Immortal army. And then he gets caught by the counterattack of the Roach Ravager Ling, which he baited. 
it's always hard in those games because you you don't want to give away the information by showing the phoenix, but then you do end up very blind. And oh me, oh my. Darker said, well, my hatchery block didn't get down on time last game. So I'm going to go for it even earlier. This is a hatchery first block, guys. So this might be in the... Actually, no, 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 because he's not gone 12 pool. And it, it doesn't make any sense to go hatchery first block on the Nexus. It's too early. Which means he could be proxy hatching. The thing is, gas pool is actually stronger for proxy hatch. At least it was for a while there. Oh, he could... Wait, oh, no, no. Okay, so he's going to build a hatchery there. So, okay, so he's going to do a spine crawler zergling flood, guys. We should see... One more drone and then gas pool. Yeah, it's just a hatch gas pool. So the trick here is Australia's going to be like, oh, wait, he didn't take the base? And then he's going to go in. And when he sees the gas in the pool, he should immediately scout for proxy hatch. Sees the gas, sees the pool. Australia, scout for proxy hatch right now, my friend. Because this is a normal hatch gas pool timing for the gas in the pool, except the pool is four seconds late, number one. So that's the first tell. Second tell is you didn't see a hatchery on his second or his third, but he builds the Nexus! Estrella, wake up, mate! It's dark, he does this all the time! Oh, no, okay. Dude, the Nexus almost always gets you killed in this scenario. You technically can defend, but it's so hard. Okay, Zealot starts building. Where's his second pylon? Second pylon, Estrella! Second pylon! Oh my god, he's a little slow on the response. He was not expecting this, guys. He's clearly caught off guard. He was not expecting this. Oh, this is this is a big problem. He really thought that Dark had just taken the front third base. He scouts it late. And the second pylon is just in time. Okay, it is just in time. It's fine. He's going to go forge. Now, forge stops you from dying. But it's not the best response. Because the, the, the Zerg can transition pretty darn well. Link speed's on the way. Link speed has now started. Gas has been pulled off except for one. He's going to try and build some spines behind the hatchery back here, as well as get some zerglings out to fight the zealot. Oh, he's even going to bring the drones in. As long as you don't take a third hit, that's usually pretty good. And as long as, yep, yeah, <clears throat> loses the zerglings, but, oh, there's an adept here as well. The zealot enjoying that choke point. Straya getting some good trades, man. Ooh, does get rid of that drone. Nicely done. Zealot should run away, maybe. Trying to slow down these spine crawlers. Zealot runs away. Does lure the Zerglings back for a little bit. We've got a shield battery and two cannons coming up. And you know what? Since he has two base, that should be enough to keep him alive here. Yep, two cannons, a battery, two adepts out here as well. Oh, he gets the creep! That's big. That's really big. Barely gets back to the shield battery. If he lost those adepts, it could have been an issue. He also can shade past, but because he knows Link Speed will be on the way, that's a little twitchy. Two cannons on the way. As well, there's a Banely Nest. Oh my god, Dark's not expanding. You're meant to expand if they go cannons, but he's like, no dude, I'm all in, man. I am all in. I am 100% committed. And the problem for, for Australia here is his buildings are clumped, which means they're weak to Banelings. And number two, he has no production, only one gateway. If he loses Warp Gate, he's screwed. So we should see him healing that with the battery and then uh, overcharging it as he runs out of energy. Adepts are going to come forward, try to fight this. But they do very little damage, which is why players prefer Stalkers in this scenario. Probe in the main base is going to get cleaned up by the Zerglings. And Warp Gate barely finishes without him having to activate Overcharge, which is actually really impressive. Uh, more pylons, more cannons trying to spread back. Problem is the spines break the wall and the Banelings bust in. Lairs on the way in case he needs to go Nidus Worm afterwards or drops. He's already moving an Overlord to the right to be ready to drop. As long as you've got extra pylons spread backwards, another pylon on the left is really necessary. Because otherwise, this pylon powers the whole left side. So probably builds a pylon here next. Estrella still has no production. There we go. Pylon does go down on the left. Estrella's really dotting his eyes, crossing his T's. He's looking for Banelings right now. Because he's like, I guess this is just a macro follow-up. But remember, his probe saw nothing at home. No expansion. So he knows that th there is no follow-up. He's like, no, no, I've just got to survive. He's going to go Cybercore. Is he going to go Stargate? I think Robo is the best call. Is it, though? Yeah, yeah, I think Robo's probably the best. He's going to start with a gateway. <clears throat> Does have money. Money. It's a lot of cannons and batteries. No forge, which means he cannot keep building cannons. And oh my god, the circling drop. Dude, he he's realized he just can't bust this much static. Oh my god, he just can't do it. Cannon does beat the spine. But he's just going to drop in the main with no battery, no cannon, no support there. 
That's a huge problem. This cannon will beat that spine as well. Oh my gosh. Oh no, Australia's going to lose his main in every probe. If, as long as he holds the ramp with Banelings, you will not be able to get down there, which means Australia's going to get knocked back to one base. And all of his production's in his main. Oh no. Okay, quick, quick mineral walk. The Banelings didn't hold the ramp. They didn't hold the ramp, which means the probes escape. Oh, bit of a blunder there for Dark, letting those probes escape, because you're never going to break the natural. Dark needs to expand right now. He absolutely needs to expand right now to get ahead off of this. You're going to kill the main. There we go. Droning starts. He's starting to build drones, guys. He's sending a drone down. He's going to expand. Probe does not manage to... Oh, it does escape just barely. He's going to go for the slowest baneling drop of all time down there, heading to get in behind that base. Two Stargates are building, but the Overlord sees it, and there's a lair already made, which means if Dark can get up enough economy... He can get up a Spire or a Hydrodent, and, and he can counter it. I would say Spire's probably the better option for Corruptors. Because I don't expect... I'd actually, I don't know, there might be Void Rays. In which case, Hydras is not a bad choice. Bailing Drop coming in from behind. Gateway should see it. Astraea. Careful, mate. Oh my god, Astraea. Oh my god, he's got nothing that shoots up. Oh my god, no! No! Oh my gosh, okay. Okay. Oh my god, this is denying so much mining time right now. He starts two Void Rays. The Alpha of Chads does begin. Bailing and Zergings from the right. Bailings from the left as well. Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Bailings are in the mineral line! Oh no! Oh sweet boom booms! Oh sweet boom booms! But wait, that force field barely stopped that getting down. Only nine probes went down. A lot of Ling Bane just died. The problem is all these guys are one hit from death and you know there's going to be another Baneling drop but will there? Because overlords are about to start dying. Void rays are going to start clearing all of this up. There's overlords everywhere. A few lings are trying to drop but the rest are scattering as they should. If he splits his void rays up, he can kill these overlords so well. Main base being rebuilt right now for Astray. He's got to split the void rays up though. He's not splitting up. And this drop, it's going to sneak into his main base behind it. Droning going on for Dark. He's got spores and he's trying to build queens ever so desperately. Where's his queen at right now? He's got two guys. Oh, he's dropping a queen inside Australia's main base. He tries to drop a queen. She quickly drops her trousers and starts marking her territory. The Void Rays are like, I don't know where you're from, where you think that's acceptable, but that's disgusting. And of course, they do immediately enact corporal punishment upon her. Uh, or capital punishment, I should say. Uh, going after the Overlord, that one does go down. If he can keep killing Overlords, Dark's economy will be arrested. They're both at 35 workers. This game is actually going to reset. I cannot believe it. This game is going to reset and turn into a macro game. Problem, Australia only has one gate and one robo on the ground production, and there's Creep at his third bases. So he's building an Oracle and a second Oracle to try and reveal what's going on. Void Rays are going to come in, and he's going to fight the Queens. Yes, he is. Oh, but one of his guys is already wounded. He's got to pull it back if he wants to save it. And he does. He gets himself a queen. Just barely pulled back too early at first. But he does pull to the right. If he can find any more of these overlords, that would be massive. Just going to chill there for now. Oh, he's got an oracle. I don't think... No, no, no. He's too damaged. He can't take this fight. He's got to just keep harassing for now. Oracle will be waiting. There's another oracle that's come out as well. Problem is, Australia needs to get a probe out to the corner to take a third. If he can't get a third, he's going to struggle. Um, you know what would be god tier, guys? If he's... Oh, Void Rays go in. Picked off two drones. Gets two drones, gets in, gets out. Oracles ready to go into the main base as well. There's two spores in the main, though, which means it's actually very well defended. Did he see the Hydroden? Yes, he did. He's getting a second Robo. Wait, what happened to his first Robo, guys? Did he cancel it? I thought he had a Robo building. Maybe it was because it was blocked in the buy in the natural and his units would have been died. They would have been blocked. Oh, he was building it here, which means there was no way to get out. Whereas this Robo should be able to pop the units where they can actually stand, hopefully. Oh, that's a bummer that he had to cancel the Robo. He could already be into Colossus tech, which is so good against a Hydra Ling player. Either way, Australia's in a good position up a few workers, but it's the lack of ability to get a third that hurts him. And Dark realizes how messy this game is. And he says, you know what's good in messy games? Weird stuff. I'm going to take a corner base. And you know what? Actually, I didn't even realize. For some reason, I was thinking Dark had an extra base. Dark's only on two bases. He desperately needs that third. He's even going to make Burrow right now. Second Robo, Robo Bay. Oh, Australia's going to go double Robo Colossus. I I'd love to see him get a third base, though. But it's easier said than done. He does have an Observer coming out. As that Observer comes out, he can clear all this creep. 
up. It's such a slow cleanup, and that is the issue that he's going to have to deal with right now. Dark double expanding to his own third base as well as a corner expansion. Creep Tomb is getting picked off here. And... Oh, those Void Rays and Observers will need to go after it, but the Lava refusing to die. They take a very long time to die, Lava. They do have about a billion armor, so it is what it is. If you clear the Creep, it will get rid of it. Warp Prism coming out right now. Dude. It's a mass Hydra of 43 drones for Dark. Its first few are out. No Evo Chambers whatsoever, but two Colossus building for Astraea is huge. Problem, if a Spire comes down and there's enough Corruptors and they can overwhelm the Void Rays, they'll kill everything. This is one of those rare cases where normally Corruptors can't kill ground units, but they can kill Colossus. Oh, he sees the Hydras. That's really good scouting. Now the Void Rays have cleaned up the creep on the left, but they did not see the high ground base apparently. Oh, he didn't see it. He's clearing up the creep here as well. He's just going to keep pushing forward. Oracle setting up stasis traps, always a good idea. But no third base just yet. There we go. Third plus double gas should happen right now. Stray has taken a while to do it. Set up his stasis traps and his void rays. Oh, this could be big. If some of these hydras get frozen, he could fight the other ones. But no, not worth it. He's going to back off for now. And it looks like those hydras do get frozen. But the void ray kill makes it worth it for dark. Third base is down. A thousand minerals in the bank. Two colossus are out. He's building more. Infestation pit and evo chamber on the way. Dark realizes vipers will counter everything. Estrella needs to transition into a normal macro game right now. If he does, he's, he's in a good spot. But if he doesn't and he stays on just colossus, then he has to hit a timing. And that timing will have to hit before the Hive comes in. Hive starts up right now. 12-minute Hive. Oh, he's only got a few minutes till Vipers hit the field. This is a big problem right now for Astraea. He has four Colossus. He has a Warp Prism, but he's only got four Gateways. He can't really warp in a lot of meat and potatoes with this army. I want to see Zealots warping in. I want to see a lot of army for him. But he's got so few units. Stasis Trap actually catches those Hydras on the retreat. That's really cute. Oracles thinking about going in the main base. Astraea's building Immortals and Stalkers right now. He's building basic units. He wants to commit. His third base is up. He's got the Gas Mining there as well. Oracles going the main base. Not quite able to kill the Queen. He does take out the Lurker Den. Which is not a bad snipe whatsoever. Colossus coming forward. Gets some damage on the Hydras, but not all that much. That Queen goes down. Oracle's going to come back. If he can get Stasis Traps to stop his army getting swarmed, this could be huge. But he's got to push in, and he's got to do it now. High Energy Oracle goes down! Oh, that is a big loss there for Astraea. Has he lost his Observer? No, he hasn't. The Hydras are coming through the middle of the map. That's kind of a crazy move. Is he base trading? Is Dark base trading? What? He's kind of luring him. Oh, he's just leading him on a trip. Oh no, Australia's getting baited back. His army, his army wins right now, guys. His army wins, but he's getting lured home. He's taking a fourth base, which is fine. If he goes eight gate, twilight, double forge, storm. He's not doing those things, which means Vipers counter his entire army. I'm telling you, man, this supply block for Dark is brutal. He should already be building Vipers, but he's not able to. Finally, the three Vipers start up. And those three Vipers can abduct the Colossus, abduct the Immortals. The Twilight's just started. If Astraea does not push right now or run home, there's going to be a point about a minute from now when those Vipers abduct all of his important units and he's in D-Town. Dark, the master of D-Town, the mayor of the D, the man that likes to abduct his opponent's units and ruin their day. He's got a corner base in the bottom left with 12 workers secretly mining. Estrella thinks he's putting him back to two base mining right now, but he's not. He's got that secret expansion and it's working. It's paying dividends. The Vipers just got energy for their first abduct. The Oracles are going to see it. Oh me, oh my. Nice force fields blocking some of that army. But oh man, he does try to focus fire the Vipers as well. The Colossus broke the entire right flank of Hydras, but those abducts are massive. Great pickups. Dude, Estrella's micro is actually insane with the prison pickups. That was beautiful, but the Hydras get the prison with the Colossus inside. Not enough support units. Estrella's entire army goes down. What in the heck did we just watch? What? In the heck did we just watch? Estrella has a decent income, but he's got no units. He warps in for desperation sentries. Oh no. He's building two Colossus. He's trying to get back to a decent army. But remember, in this game, Blink is not it. You need Storm. You need Storm and, and High Templar with feedback. Without that, the Vipers will reign supreme. That being said, he did kill all the Vipers. There's only one building. But Dark... He's droning, and he's transitioning Lurkers. Dark is not rushing it. He's got gas mining in the corner as well. Dude, what a game of StarCraft this is.
Dude, I, I love it. I think from now on, I'm just going to cast any Dark Astraea match. Don't get me wrong, I've seen times in the past where, where Dark kind of just jumped on top and didn't get him a give him a chance to play. But I think a lot of people forget that in 2022, Astraea had one of his best years. And uh, he was really unlucky with the brackets. You need to perform. To become a StarCraft champion, for those who don't know, you because you're not highly seeded when you're coming up the ranks, like Astraea wasn't, you have to beat the best players in the world, often in the round of 16 or the round of 8. And what people forget is in 2022 in Valencia, Astraea crushed everyone and then lost to Dark, the eventual tournament winner, 3-1 to one in the quarterfinals. They forget that in Atlanta, in the round of 16, he lost to Hero in the round of 8 or the round of 16 as well. You know, like a lot of the tournaments that year, he lost to the winner. And he even made it to the finals of Home Story Cup against Rainer and actually had a pretty damn close finals, which he lost 2-4. to four. Australia's a very high level player, but... He's, he's often fallen to the very champions at the finish line. Here, though, he's doing exactly what he needs to do, which is he's got tons of Storm coming in, mass energy, Arc on Immortal building. He needs more Immortals pretty desperately, and he does need those Forge upgrades. He's got plus two on the way, second Forge building. As I said, if he goes double Forge and Storm, he can play like a normal game from here and be pretty good. But right now, his anti-lurker is three immortals and nothing else. The Colossus don't do much. Storm doesn't do much. So he's just got to get a few more immortals out and he has to do it very quickly. Dark's corner base still working very well. Dark's in no rush to finish this game. He's got both lurker upgrades. He's got plus two range coming in. Second Evo chamber so he can start armor upgrades as well and then slowly add melee. He's up on uh, so many gases. His main base gas one. Guys, is he on 12 gas? 12 gas again. Dark is one of the most gas-hungry players out there. Two Vipers, Mass Hydra Lurker. Ooh. Strayer on 69 probes. He doesn't have anywhere to mine from, because remember, this game has been going so long, their bases are mining out. Cancel. Let's cancel that. Natural's almost all gone. Main's almost all gone. Third's going to be getting low in the next few minutes as well. Fleet Beacon on the way right now. He's thinking about getting a Tempest transition. I think it'd be Tempest rather than Carriers in this game because they can just outrange everything. 11 more Lurkers morphing? Is that in Vision? No, it's just out of Vision. Triple Hallucinated Phoenix sees a Spire on the way. Tells him that Dark's willing to play late game. Dark's not just going all in on low tech or anything like that. So the trick here is you want to catch the Lurkers as they move forward. But notice Dark. He's got an Overseer providing high ground vision. And he's got... 27 lurkers the disruptors he needs them he needs them watch out watch out oh the sneaky of ducks right as he forces the high templar back there's another immortal sticking out those lurkers go a bit too far forward and a couple lurkers do die two immortals for two lurkers good trade for dark dark knows he's got way more lurkers than there are immortals if he can get that count down he can just jump on top storms do pretty well but look at that another abduct on another immortal the oracle revelations are good the storms are wounding this army slowly picking away but, oh, another one. Abduct goes on the Colossus. He does get the feedbacks, the Disruptor shot. That's what really slows down the Disruptor advances, those Disruptor shots. He's got two out. Another big Disruptor shot lands. Astraea is holding right now. He does maybe pull the trigger a little early, though. Yeah, yeah, those Zealots get cleaned up. But it looks like this push has been held. Left side, more Lurkers coming in. Dark has a one-track mind. Zergs want to do only one thing, and it's disgusting. They just want to put those spikes up inside you. And that's exactly what Dark's doing to this Protoss right now. He is trying to right now perforate the Protoss. He is trying to poke a lot of holes in him from underground. And it's working. Well, it was working. Astraea does not have enough money. Dark does. Dark can keep doing this as long as he keeps Astraea on four bases and keeps trading. Are these trades efficient? They're efficient for Astraea. But Astraea needs better than efficient. Astraea needs an awesome fight right now. Viper derping in. Unfortunate. Slight mistake there. Abduct does come down. I don't think he has the firepower for it. It looks like some of those Lurkers were fighting cannons, which was their problem. Lurkers on the right side. Oh, the double ball! The double ball! Oh, I'm sorry. Dark, did you forget? Australia's from America, the country that invented their national pastime, bowling. That's right, and that's why he's bloody good with disruptors. You, you guys ever see a bowling alley in Korea? Doesn't exist. They haven't invented it yet. Uh, they're too busy playing their stupid video games. Australia, pretty good disruptor shots, but he's working with a very small unit set. He can't afford any losses. Oh, man. Oh, my gosh. Okay, these lurkers are being a big pain. Mothership's on the way. More carriers. The creep and a lurker blocking him from expanding to the right. So, so Dark, right now, you don't need to be directly efficient. You just need to force trades while keeping your opponent small. 
And guess what? That corner base is still mining, still unscouted by Australia. This is so fitting for a North American player to be getting pushed down and overwhelmed due to a corner base. The corner base is literally the North American special. It is it is the, the bloody, uh, the, the cheeseburger and fries of, of StarCraft. It truly is. And yet in this game, it's done so much to put Dark in this great position. He's so far ahead. I mean, he saves the base. I don't know how Estrella saves that base. That's actually wild. He's down 30 probes. He's hanging on. He's got two carriers out. I, I, I can't believe it. He's trying to make Moai Templar. The Storm's doing well, but Dark simply has been leaning an economic advantage on top of him. The man's been beating him with economic sanctions. Truly doing it the way of America. That's their favorite. They throw money at it. Oh man. Ooh, Hydra's coming forward. Vipers, watch out. Watch out. Ah, oh, Carrier gets abducted. The Overseer's up front. Nicely done. Time Warp does go down. Good defense for Australia, but I don't know if it's enough, man. The battery overcharge is, go is, is gone, you know? It's just so hard to hang on. Storms are trying to land. That is a lot of units, though. And as those Hydras pop out of the stasis trap, Dark is happy to just keep trading. Mama refuses to go down. She activates another cloak, but there's so many overseers. I don't think it matters at this point. Desperation sentries from earlier coming forward, dropping some force field. They're making fake Archons. Farcons! He makes a pack of Farcons. But even with the pack of Farcons, it is not enough. That was about the most splendid game of StarCraft at pro level in a tournament that I have cast in a long time. GG, well played. Dark, you are an absolute savage. That was friggin' awesome. GG, well played.